Hello, it's the end of January 2023. I'm Peter Carter, Director of the Climate Emergency Institute. I want to talk to you about climate change, but I want to talk to you about climate change and war. Frankly, I'm finding this very, very difficult to do, and I don't expect it to be very easy for the listeners, but I want to encourage you to look into this with me because our world has never ever been in a more dangerous situation. I want to quickly cover the annual presentation of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, their annual Doomsday Clock report that of course they've been doing ever since the days of the nuclear weapons race decades ago between the United States and the then USSR. I can remember those days very well. As a physician, I was involved in the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War, and it was, it was very, very, very frightening, no question. But this, which seems to have very suddenly come upon us, but I guess it's not sudden at all, this is way worse. It's way worse. As the bulletin uh, points out, the report said that uh, we are closest to doomsday ever. But I want to share with you the fact that we're at a double doomsday because we are in a rapidly escalating, very hot war in Europe, in Ukraine, and we're all aware that there's an increasing threat of the use of nuclear weapons as this war gets heavier and worse and more bloody and more destructive, and we're seeing it every day. At the same time, we are in, and this, I'm afraid, seems to sort of get forgotten about, but at the same time, we're in a global climate emergency, which is rapidly deteriorating. And uh, the World Economic Forum, also this month, they presented their annual global risks report. And yet again, they put what they called quite properly, climate action failure, the number one risk to the world in the short term, year or two, and also in the next 10 years. They do this every year. So back to the uh, doomsday clock and the uh, quotes from the media release this year. The Science and Security Board of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists moved the hands of the doomsday clock forward. They put the doomsday clock at 90 seconds to midnight, the closest to global catastrophe it has ever been. And they said, we are living in a time of unprecedented danger. And that's reflected by the doomsday clock change. 90 seconds to midnight is the closest the clock has ever been set, and it's a decision that the experts did not take lightly. They pointed out that the U.S. government, the NATO allies in Ukraine, have had at least a multitude of channels for dialogue, and they urged leaders to explore all of them to their fullest ability to turn back the clock, which is to turn back the risk of nuclear war, and to turn back the uh, carnage and destruction that's being done in Ukraine, which we have the awful misfortune to witness on a daily basis. They also said, of course, that the new clock time is influenced by the continuing threat posed by the climate crisis. Uh, the Doomsday Clock Bulletin had a backgrounder on the uh, war situation and also a backgrounder on the climate change survival threat. And a quote from that is as follows, the rise in emissions in 2022 accelerated the ongoing increase in the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, which will continue so long as emissions of carbon dioxide continue. Not only did weather extremes continue to plague diverse parts of the globe, but they were more evidently attributable to climate change. It's never been more clear, it's been clear to me for a very long time, that war and fossil fuels go together. They're partners in annihilation. They're partners in the crimes of all time, and we have to end both. And the whole world has to get together to end both. We have to put an end to war. 
and a belief in war and an approach to war and a war-based economy and continued increase of uh, weapons of war. It's been unbelievable to see as this uh, Ukraine situation deteriorates that seems like all of the countries have uh, lots of these terrible weapons. They're all weapons of mass destruction. They're all huge, massive weaponry. So, as I say, I found this very, very, very difficult to look at. It really, really has to stop. We really all have to work hard for peace. Um, we have to wage peace. A livable future because of the risk of nuclear war and the fact that the global climate emergency is put on the back burner again and is not being given attention, is getting worse and worse and worse, as I keep reporting, we are in a situation where a livable future, frankly, is looking impossible. Our self-annihilation has never been more possible. That's clear. So just a couple of media reports then, both on the same day, 27th of January. The Kremlin claims the West is now directly involved in the Ukraine war after agreeing to send tanks in the fight against Russia's invading forces. This is a very, very hot and a very bloody war. This is no Cold War. Same day in the media, Russia is now at war with NATO and the West, a senior EU official admits. The only way to stop the war is to work for peace and negotiations. But, as I say, I want to go over it again, of these two situations. The Ukraine war is escalating. We are aware, we hear of the nuclear risk, but it's being ignored. It's a world war, it's a proxy war that's now well established in the Ukraine with an increasing threat of nuclear weaponry. And at the same time, the climate emergency is escalating. It's actually made far worse with this war. A climate uh, catastrophe, annihilation catastrophe, this risk is also being way ignored. And I want to point out that this month in January also, the World Economic Forum, they had their annual big uh, meeting in Davos, and before the meeting, they published their annual global risk report. And yet again, they put what they call, quite rightly, the failure of climate action as the top risk to the world. And it's been the top risk for several, several years now. In um, looking uh, through the media to um, put together this presentation, I came across um, uh, a report from the RAND Corporation. And the RAND Corporation in the United States said, this is one of the bloodiest wars in modern history. Hundreds are being killed every day on both sides. And if you know anything about RAND, you'll know that uh, if they say this war is this terrible, um, it really is because, hmm, Rand knows what they're talking about with respect to war. So I put out an appeal for everyone, the whole world, to get involved and engaged in both of these emergencies, the climate emergency and the war Ukraine emergency, because it's a double doomsday situation. They're both getting rapidly, rapidly worse. And there is no future in this at all. I want to uh, again put out an appeal that I've been putting out for years now. Uh, fossil fuels is our enemy. War itself is our enemy. We have to fight fossil fuels. We have to fight to get the corporations and governments to leave the effing fossil fuels in the ground. And we have to do this for a future. Now for a future at all.